morning. Morning. Everybody good? Yes. Everybody good? Partially good? Not good at all? <laughs> all right. Um, well, we're going to get started, started with, with singing as we get settled up here. Um, this is kind of one of them days, I don't know if y'all have ever had one, where, you know, you just seem like you're topsy-turvy. Mm -hmm. You know, you just can't seem to focus. Well, that's me today. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, somebody needs to give me a big smack in the back of the head. Come on up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the few times he gets <laughs> <laughs> So, um, if, if we're ready to worship today, let's all stand. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> delete that from the video. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Let's start our worship today. <laughs>
Aren't you glad that nothing compares to the promise that we have in God? Amen? Amen. 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 You may be seated. It'll probably take a minute to get this adjusted. It's been a while since I had this on, right? <laughs> I was telling someone earlier, I was like, you know, we had, I was on vacation, and then we had ONU students, and then last week we had Paula with this. So I brought three messages today. <laughs> <laughs> and and y'all were like, and we brought our pillows, right? <laughs> No, I only brought one message. It's just three times as long. Anyway, now a couple quick announcements um, as we get going. Um, I believe that some of you got this in an email. Just to make sure everyone knows that we are doing a meal train for uh, Dave and Audrey uh, a couple times a week because we'd be able to help them out. Uh, a couple of things just to um, once again know is they would like to have a small portion. It's only two of them. They don't have a lot of space to keep leftovers. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to to bring those to the church on Sundays and Wednesdays, and, and we can put it in the freezer if you want or whatever, and then we will give that to uh, uh, Pastor Harold and Bill Sue. They can take them over. If they're not able to, then I'll be able to, to take them over. So we don't want a lot of people in and out there this time, right? So are you willing to help? Amen? Amen. So we, we can definitely help them out for sure, and uh, uh, that is out there if you, if you say, oh, I did not get an email on that. Well, let me know, and I'll make sure that you get on that email list. Okay? Sound good? Yep. Okay. And also, speaking of email, do you guys ever check your email? Yes. Because I, I, I don't know who, but I know the numbers when I send out the all-church email. I know the numbers of people who actually opened it up. Yep. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh. and I know, but I don't know who you are. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you are the ones not opening it up, but check your church emails because I send stuff out. I've been sending stuff out all week. To, to, to encourage you and things like that and, and prayer and things. So check it out. And you may go, well, I've never gotten a church email. Check your junk, because sometimes it'll send you the junk email, right? Um, but if you're like, well, I, I still never got any. Send me your email address, and I will get you added to the email list. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. So make yourself a note right now, because if you're like me, you will forget before I'm even done with announcements. Send Pastor Doug my email. Okay? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, church Christmas dinner is coming up December 6th, 5 o'clock. That's on Sunday out here in the family center. We want you to come. We want, we want uh, people to be there. Barbecue chicken will be provided by the church leadership team. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And our, our grill chef, Ralph, he's going to grill that out there on the big grill out back, and it's going to be slathered with barbecue sauce. And, and so there's a, a sign-up sheet if you want to add anything to that. Uh, it's out there in the family center. People are already putting down what they want to bring uh, to help us out. That would be awesome. So so bring yourself, bring your family, uh, bring, bring people with us and with you, and we'll have a good time. Speaking of Christmas, can you believe next Sunday, not today, but next Sunday, we're going to decorate the church for Christmas. And you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not even Thanksgiving yet. Yeah, but the following Sunday, Thanksgiving will be over. So we will be able to come into a church after Thanksgiving, and we'll have Christmas decorations up. Who's ready for Christmas? A couple of you are. The rest of us are kind of like, I don't know. So next Sunday, 4 o'clock, go ahead and write on your calendar. So we're going we're to gather, we're going we're to put up the big Christmas tree, it's going to be pretty, put some decorations out, and, and uh, I think I'm getting ready for Christmas. How's that sound? Yeah. I'm ready for something. <laughs> yeah. Amen? We want something to look forward to, don't we? You know, um, um, Jesus is worthy of our praise. Would you agree with that? Amen. Yes. I mean, good grief. Who has done more for us than Jesus? No one has they? So let's stand. We'll have a word of prayer. We'll sing some more um, to Jesus because He is worthy. Amen? Amen. And also, uh, be sure to tell Barbara happy birthday on your way out today. because she, <laughs> she turned the same age that my wife was. I'm not going to tell anybody how old that was, half century. But that was Saturday. Yesterday was her birthday, right? Yep. Yeah, so she's in that club now. <laughs> yeah. I got my AARP card. <laughs> Me too. It's in my wall. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your blessings, Lord. We, we thank you that we can come together and we can praise you, God. Uh, we, we just want to say you are worthy of our praise. We're asking for your presence to continue to be here, God. And for all those who are unable to be here, Father, that may not be feeling well, we know we've got some out 
visiting family, God, we are asking that you would bless them as well, especially today, Lord. Help us to give you the praise that you deserve. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's join in worship.
just because I told you I get in my own way and I get definitely get in God's way at times, right? Um, but it, it talks about the uh, things the world gave you um, and these things that, that the world gave you, you don't want to give up. You're fighting for that. You're wanting to continue the path that you went on, but yet still have a relationship with Christ. And we've got to give those things up. Let God decide if that is something He wants in our life, right? Yeah. And it's hard. And I mean, I don't know about y'all, but it's hard for me, right? Yeah. Um, but it is something, and it's simply that um, if, if you can't give it up, He'll come and save you if you kneel and humbly pray. Simple, simple, yeah, simple. Good. Just keep contact with Him, keep a relationship with Christ. So we're gonna we're gonna try this. This is totally impromptu. I, they don't have a clue what's going on here. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to do it a cappella because the music I've got is too fast. Uh, this song is kind of a slower song, in my opinion. Uh, Daniel's gonna lead, no? <laughs> so. Uh, if I can get the tune here. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill my cup, and make me whole. There are millions in this world who are craving.
today, where we've been able to study your word in Sunday school classes, God, where we're able to come together and, and to sing praises to you, Lord, and as we take the next few moments, God, and we open up your word, Father, may, may the message resonate with us, and may you minister to us exactly where we are, God, and as we always pray, Father, we, we pray that every word will be spoken exactly as you'd have it to be spoken, and Father, may every word be received exactly as you'd have it to be received. God, you are an amazing God, and we thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done for us already. We thank you for what you are going to do for us in the future. We 
love you today, Father. And we do lift you high. And we honor you in this place, God. And, and we, we, do, we come together and we say that we love you collectively. And we say all this in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Anybody got, any, got a testimony for us this morning? We always want to give time for that, right? Yeah. I love hearing your testimonies. Do you enjoy hearing other people's testimony? Yeah. Anybody have a testimony of, of, of a praise for God? How has God been to you this week? Whether it's, whether, whether it's one word, one sentence, or, or whatever, maybe. How has God been to you this week? Amazing. Oh, I like that. That's you. Awesome. Amazing, awesome, good. God has been present, yeah. hasn't He? God has been with us through all. Doug, yes. The Bible tells us that uh, uh, one day every knee shall bow mm -hmm. and every tongue confess. And I'm glad that I'm not going to be one of those that's <laughs> under compulsion yes. to kneel. Yes. That I chose yes. to do that, but. Is because he called me mm -hmm. and praised his name for uh, his convicting voice on my life one day. And I knelt and found him as my Savior. Amen. Amen. We were talking about that in our membership class. They look up provenient grace. Yeah. How God is always, always wooing us. And he, he's always reaching out to us. And we come to that conclusion, Pastor, where, where we said, hey, yes, I want that. Aren't you glad for that moment? That, 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 that you kneel by your bed, uh, at the altar, and in a car, and at the coffee table, whatever it may have been. And you said yes to Jesus. Amen? Amen. If that's not worth shouting for, I don't know what is. Do you, church? Well, I, I, if I can go on just a little farther. <laughs> Absolutely, brother. <laughs> when I was in the Army and I wasn't living as I should uh, live for the Lord, but always in the back of my mind, I could hear this voice saying, come back to me, mm -hmm. come back to me. Yeah. There were a lot of prayers behind that too, weren't there? Right? Absolutely. Your prayers are making a difference, church. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Good. Kids can head back to the, the kids' church. And Teresa has that today, I believe. So they're going to have a great time back there. And, and we'll see if we can get this here going up here as well. Hopefully my, my pointer will work, my, my clicker as they say, right? So like I said earlier, it's been, a, it's been a moment since I've been up here in front of you all. So we are going to back and we're going to journey with Paul again. Does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I love studying the Bible. I love, I love studying the book of Acts. And, and Dr. Luke does, does such a good job of laying out for us. And, and now we're with Paul and we know that a few weeks ago we kind of left him and he was in Ephesus, and he was a dude ministry member, and, and he was there for a couple years. And, and, and we know that through Scripture there in Acts 19, we know that, that God was doing amazing things through Paul, wasn't he? People were finding Jesus. People were being healed. It was amazing. Wouldn't you love to have a ministry like Paul? Wow. That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, but we also we know it seemed like everywhere Paul went, something followed him around, wasn't it? And it was called trouble. People would, would, would decide that they were maybe didn't like what he was preaching and they would get other people riled up and, and there would be a big riot and he'd get run out of town sometimes and, and, and then he'd go to the next place and, and he, he would do good and, and then maybe some people would come and they'd chase him off again. And You ever felt like that? You ever felt like that? When you were doing something good for Jesus, it seemed like trouble always follows. You ever been there? You're like, God, you wanted me to do this, and I'm doing this, and it's not really turning out right. Well, we think it should be. Huh. Well, as we move forward in our story here with Paul, and, 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 and now um, Paul, he comes to a point where, where he's standing in front of the Sanhedrin. He's back in Jerusalem, and, and guess what? Trouble follows him even there. And, and he's standing before the Sanhedrin. He's standing before the Jewish council, the court there. And, 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 and now they, he's on trial. I've never been on trial. Praise God. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, I've been in the jury. 
during the trial, that, that was stressful enough, right? But, but, but Paul, he is literally standing in front of the Sanhedrin, and he is on trial. So we're going to start in, in chapter 22, the very last verse, and then we're going to go into the first 10 verses of chapter 23 of Acts. You can find it on your tablet, on your phone. We'll also have it up here on the screen as well. Are you ready to go on this journey this morning? Yes. Yeah. Okay, how about the rest of you? Y'all ready to go on this journey this morning? Yeah. Amen. We're there, aren't we? Good, good. I'm glad I'm here today, aren't you? Yes. It says this right here. The commander wanted to find out exactly why Paul was being accused by the Jews. So the next day he released him. And he ordered the chief priest and all the members of the, of the Sanhedrin to assemble. Then he brought Paul and had him stand before him. So now Paul is in the courtroom, if you will, right? It says, Paul looked straight at the Sanhedrin and he said, My brothers, I have fulfilled my duty to God in all good conscience to this day. At this, the high priest Ananias ordered those standing near Paul to strike him on the mouth. Wow. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. You sat there to judge me according to the law, yet you yourself violate the law by commanding that I be struck. And those standing near Paul, they said, How dare you insult God's high priest? And Paul, he replies, Brothers, I did not realize that he was the high priest. For it is written, Do not speak evil about the ruler of your people. Then Paul, knowing that some of them were Sadducees, and others were, were, were Pharisees. He called out in Sanhedrin. And he's saying again, he, he kind of collects himself and he says, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, descended from Pharisees. I stand trial because of the hope of the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees. Oh, oh. Hello. I've got it right here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll let that come back on for a moment. God is good, amen. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to find, I'm going to look at my notes here. That's why you're always prepared, right? We're like Boy Scouts here. We're always prepared, amen. Amen. So now, where are we at? Some about somebody just turned the lights out. What was that? Somebody got punched in the mouth, right? And then so, so Paul, he kind of gathers himself and he, he says, "My brothers, I am a Pharisee, descending from Pharisees, right?" And, and, and he said that he said that I stand on trial because of the hope of the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, here's what here's where we're at. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the assemblies were divided. Why? Here we go. The next verse it says, The Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, and that there are neither angels nor spirits. But the Pharisees believe all these things. There was a great uproar, Dr. Luke tells us. And some of the teachers of the law who were Pharisees, they stood up and they argued vigorously. They said this, they said, we find nothing wrong with this man. They said, what if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him? The dispute became so violent that the commander was afraid Paul would be torn to pieces by them. And he ordered the troops to go down and to take him away from them by force and bring him into the barracks. Wow, now what an event, huh? Kind of like this, just when that happened to us, imagine that here, tenfold, right? So, so if we go back to the beginning, we know, we know that, that Paul was a Roman citizen and we know that, that the captain here, he's thinking to himself, he's like, there, 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 there must be something, Paul must have done something really bad because all the people here want to do away with him. So as a good commander, he, he, he tries to find out, well, what did Paul do? That was so bad. And guess what? Nobody could really say what he did. Huh. But they still wanted to get rid of Paul. He kind of, the commander kind of scratches his head and he says, I'll tell you what, let's bring Paul back to his people and let's let them try him, let them figure it out, right? That, that, that's, what, that, that, that's what he was wanting to do. So, so, so he takes Paul back to the Sanhedrin. That's why he ordered the Sanhedrin. To, he arranged a special meeting for them to, to try, to take, to take a look at Paul and see exactly what's going on. Now, if we remember the Sanhedrin, you're looking at a group of 70, 71 Jewish teachers, the high priest presiding. They, they are the ones who, who 
took the law and they, they applied it, the sacred Jewish law, and they, and they applied it to their people. Okay? And those who violated that law, they went before them and they stood trial. And then whatever the outcome was, whatever the judge says, right, is what they would have to have to do. So the captain, he brings Paul in. Here's Paul. And they're like, okay, so we're getting ready to have trial. And he just kind of steps aside and watches the trial at that point, doesn't he? And, and, and we see that Paul, he looks at the members of the Sanhedrin, and, and he tells them, and he calls them, he says, my brothers. So when he did that, when he said, my brothers, I think the Sanhedrin, their ears probably perked up. Was he saying, I'm a fellow Jew? That's what he's saying. And now, they, now they're like, okay, this guy's got our attention. We're here. We're, we're, we're in court session, if you will, right? The court is in session. So here we go. Well, what's going to happen here? And Paul, then he begins to tell them. He says, he says, God has given me a mission, and, 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 and in all good conscience, I have done everything that God has asked me to do, is what Paul says. And then the high priest tells the people next to Paul, strike him on the mouth. And then you think to yourself, well, why in the world would you do that? Right? That doesn't make any sense, does it? Paul says, I am doing what God has told me to do. The high priest is saying, no, you're not. Punch him in the mouth. You see how that works? And then and Paul, Paul was like, I found like he was kind of taken aback for a moment. And then and he was like, are you kidding me? You judge me? And you have me struck like this? Who do you think you are? <laughs> right? You're a whitewashed wall. God's divine judgment is coming down on you. And obviously we see what, well, what happens next is, is, is the people around him, they go, uh, how dare you speak to the high priest like that? We see Paul's reply to that. He's kind of like, oh, oops, sorry. He did apologize for his words. I think there might have been a little bit of sarcasm in this voice. See, I think Paul is saying, yeah, we're not, I'm, I'm not supposed to speak to a high priest like that. I'm sorry. But I think Paul is also saying, this person's actions is not becoming of a high priest. The reason I talk to him like that is because how in the world well, am I supposed to say he's a high priest when he acts like that? A true high priest would not do that. Let me put it this way. Have you ever been somewhere and someone has said something, whatever it is, and then later on you find out that they claim to be a follower of Jesus? And you're like, by their words, I would have never connected those two. You ever been there? I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if we've ever made people think that ourselves about us. You know, it does matter what we say, doesn't it? It does matter how we act. It does matter how we react. It does matter what we post on social media. And then later someone says, well, by your words, I never thought you were a Jesus follower. Be careful, right? We've got to be careful. But now, now back to Paul, he, he, he goes through that and, and then he kind of tells them, he, he gathers himself again and, and he says, my brothers. And I kind of like what Paul does here. I don't know if he was, was much of a politician, but maybe he kind of threw this one in there. Because he knew that some of these guys were Sadducees and some were Pharisees. He himself was a Pharisee. We know that the Sadducees, they were sad, you see, because they didn't believe in the resurrection. Right? They didn't believe in, in life after death. That's it, right? No wonder they were sad, right? Maybe Paul, knowing some of that, he stands up and he says, guys, he says, I'll tell you why I'm on trial here, because I'm a Pharisee. Like, probably half of you are. He may have said that under his breath. He says, the reason I'm on trial is, is, is because, because I'm talking about the resurrection, because I've been telling people about Jesus, and, and you cannot talk about Jesus without, without the resurrection being involved. Why? Because we 
serve a living God. Amen? Amen? God is alive. He's been resurrected. And then what was the, the reaction of the Sanhedrin? Here you go. I'll get it here in a minute. Verse 7. A dispute broke out between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the dispute was over theology. Man, I'm glad we're over that today, aren't you? <laughs> I'm glad we never have disputes over theology in the church. Amen? <laughs> if you've been around the church long enough, and that's why, you know, that's why I, I got a dear brother who, who's, who's a Baptist minister, I'm a Nazarene minister, and we have civil discussions, and it's really good. Amen? I don't know why people can't do that, but boy, you want to get people inside the church all fired up, start, talk, start throwing some theology around, right? So, so the Sadducees, you know, they were, they're a sad group of people, and the Pharisees, they're like, hey, 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 maybe, maybe a spirit has talked to him. Maybe God has spoke to him. We find nothing wrong with him. The Sadducees are probably throwing their arms up. Are you kidding me? Probably kind of like going to Congress today, huh? <laughs> you think? You ever been in, in a situation where people were, were debating different topics? Yeah. It's actually, a, it's actually, it can be good. And here, here's one example. One of my Bible classes that I was taking, uh, we had to debate. And we were not given the choice of topics that we had to debate. You had to, you had to be for whatever the topic was. And another total subject, at some point in, along in the class, you had to be against whatever it was. So me, me and my partner, we got ours and we did some study and stuff. And, 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 and the, the topic was we were for, or actually we were against abortion. Whoo, I said, this is going to be good, right? That was an easy one, wasn't it? We just destroyed the other team that had to be, that had to be for it. Anybody would have, right? <laughs> But then, 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 then it's like, okay, here's what you guys want before. So we was like, oh, maybe this isn't going to be quite so good. We had before doctor-assisted suicide. Oh, boy. <laughs> that was a little bit tougher, right? One, we were like, yeah, that was awesome. And the second, we were kind of like, oh, no. <laughs> the professor did that on purpose, right? And then every, all the different teams had that. And, and, but it was good. And there were civil debates and and. and Quite humorous in some spots, and after each debate, the class we would we would talk about what other topic was, and so yeah, you guys made a great point here, you guys made a great point there, and, and it was fun, it, it, it was enjoyable to be to, to listen to the debates, and it was enjoyable to be a part of the debates, right? But this debate that uh, Paul had going on here, it was probably kind of like a presidential debate, right? Maybe the first one. <laughs> It probably wasn't quite so civil. It was, it was, people were, were going back and forth. And, 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 and as a matter of fact, it got so, so raucous in there and so crazy that, that the commander sent his troops in and said, get Paul out of there before they tear him to pieces. <laughs> they was fired up. Theology will do that to you, won't it? <laughs> oh, mercy. They were fired up group. They were going at it. You're wrong. No, you're wrong. All of a sudden, it went from Paul to what they believe, and they were not believing the same. The commander said, let's get him out of there before they deliver the tear him to pieces. They're going to rip him apart. Let's get him out of there. Bring him back to the barracks. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever had a time in your life that, that it was so chaotic, and, and there was so much noise, and so much chaos, and, and then it, with the world all around you, that, that you that you would even wonder if, if God could even hear you. Does God even see me? Hmm. You ever been there in your life? Some people say, well, where was God? Paul was getting ready to get torn to pieces. Where was God? Why would God abandon Paul in the middle of the mess? That was the longest introduction I've ever had for a message. Because here's the key point right here, church. The key verse in this entire event, it comes in verse 11. It says this. That night, the Lord stood near him 
Paul and said, Keep up your courage. For just as you for just as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must bear witness also in Rome. So, so we say, where was God at in the middle of this mess? And all this when this chaos broke out, and they were literally getting ready to, to pull Paul into pieces. Where was God at? And he was standing right beside him. So I say this, friend, no matter what you are experiencing today, I have good news. I have good news for you. No, no, no matter the chaos in your life, no matter the trouble, no matter how crazy it is, no, no matter what's happening in your life right now, no matter how messy it is, God is standing right next to you. I get amen, church. Amen. amen. 2020 has been a messy year, hasn't it? Yeah. 2020 has been a year that we soon want to forget. Even in all that we've gone through, God has been standing right beside us. As a matter of fact, you know what, what Jesus tells us when, when he gives us the Great Commission in Matthew 28? You know what he tells us as soon as he's done with the Great Commission? Jesus says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus has never left you, friend. Amen? Amen. Amen. He is right there with us. He is right there in the mess. He is right there in 2020. He is with us, friend. Jesus' message to Paul was simply, take courage, Paul. Have heart. Take courage. Jesus, he details of the paralyzed man in Matthew chapter 9. He says, take heart, son. And later on in verse 22 of, the, of, that, of that chapter, he tells the woman with the issue of blood, take heart, daughter. You know, one of the disciples, when they were on the boat and they were sailing and a storm comes up and they're all by themselves and, and they, they, they see something walking on the water to them and they thought it was a ghost, didn't they? They said they cried out in fear. They said they were terrified. We know it was Jesus walking on the water. Remember that story? Here's what Jesus told them. He said this. He said, he said in Matthew chapter 14, he said, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Remember what Paul said? Or remember when, when Paul was in Corinth and he was down in the dumps and Jesus came to him in a vision. And Jesus told him in, in Acts chapter 18, he, he says, Jesus looks at Paul and says, Do not be afraid. Amen. Amen. We know it, it was Paul's goal, it, it was his lifelong goal to, to, to preach in Rome. To bring the message of the one who saved him to Rome. The known capital of the world at that time. That was his goal. That's what he wanted more than anything. He said, God, if I, I, I really want... And, and we know that Paul, he tried to get to Rome... Many, many times. And each time it seemed like, like, like maybe it was looked like he could get to Rome and, and Jesus would tap him on the shoulder and say, i got a mission for you over here. I want you to go over there. Or, or it, it, it took him a long time. To, and finally, finally he is on his way. Yes. He's on his way to Rome. He's on the boat. And Paul's probably like, man, I can't wait to get there. The riots are behind me. <laughs> now the, the, the sea began to riot. Storm rose up. It was a bad storm too. The, 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 the boat, it was tossed and it was turned. And the Bible tells us for days this went on. The sailors, they were throwing everything they could overboard just to survive. They even threw their food overboard. Everything they had, they threw overboard. And, and the Bible tells us that the sailors, they got to the point where they had given up hope of ever being saved. This has gone on for days. We're not going to make it. 
Paul, he stands up and, and, and he addresses the sinners. After they've been battered and after they've been beaten by the, by the raging sea. For days. This is what it tells them in Acts chapter 27. He tells them, Paul says, I urge you to keep up your courage. Keep your courage, men, he says. Why would he tell them that? In the very next verse he says, Last night an angel of the God whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me. Stood beside me. And said, Do not be afraid, Paul. When the wind blows and the waves are crashing. Paul says, An angel of God whom I belong to whom I serve stood beside me and said, do not be afraid. And then in verse 25, Paul, he says, so keep up your courage, men, for I, he says, I have faith in God. So where was God in the storm? He was standing right by Paul with me. He was right there. I am here to tell you this morning that God is standing right beside you. No matter what you're going through, He's telling you, he's saying, take heart, son. Take heart, daughter. He is saying, keep up your courage. He's saying, do not be afraid. He is saying, I am with you always. For you see, I've been with God. And he has told me to tell you this. In the midst of the craziness, in the midst of the chaos, in, in, in the midst of the mess, in the midst of 2020, do not be afraid. I, Jesus says, I am standing beside you. So keep up your courage, church, for we have faith in God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Isaiah 43 tells us this. Do not fear. For I, God says, I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Rejoice in that today, church. Amen? Amen. So, so no, matter, no matter where you may be, ten years from now, if the Lord tarries, uh, 2020 is probably just going to be something that we say when everything's going bad. <laughs> right? Oh, that was a 2020, wasn't it? <laughs> no matter where you are in 2020, as crazy as it is, as messy as it is, as chaotic as your life may be, God is right beside you. Maybe this morning somebody needed to hear that. Maybe this morning you would like to take some time and, and then pray to, to reach out to God and say, God, I know you're right here. Maybe you just want God to speak to you. <coughs> That assurance that he is there. Maybe you just want him to feel, you just want, you just want him, you just want to feel his arm around you and pull you in tight. Say, I got you. I got you. So let's just take a couple minutes today and then let's just pray. Let, let's thank God that he is with us in the middle of the mess. Amen. And, let, and let, let's pray that, that God would show himself to us in the middle of that mess. And then let's, let's pray that. that that, that message that we receive that we can take out to other people because their life is crazy right now too. And to add all what's going on, it's Thanksgiving and Christmas. If that's not stressful enough. <laughs> Let's throw in some 2020, right? Let's pray. God, we come to you today, Lord. And we, we look at this story, that this true event that happened that, that, that Paul was in, God. And how it seemed like everywhere he went that chaos followed him. His whole life, when he became a follower of you, Lord, it seemed like you know, we can often say maybe his whole life was a 2020. I don't know. But he kept going on. How did he do that? Because, God, you never left him. 
God, how, how can we keep going on? We know that you never leave us. We thank you, God, that, that in the middle of the storm, that in the middle of the, of the craziness and, and the chaotic part of our lives, God, and, and in the middle of the mess of that we call 2020, and, and Lord, it, it's almost Thanksgiving time, and, and we want family to gather together, and it's almost Christmas time, and we want to see family, and, and there are going to be a lot of people who are not going to be able to see that through this year, God. I believe that you have put on us to share our story with them. To share Paul's story. To say even in the middle of the mess that you are there with us. You are standing right beside us, God. You have never left us. You have never forsaken us. God, you are fighting for us. Even, even when, when we are in, 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 the, in the sea and it's just throwing us back and forth, God, you will even walk on water to get to us. We say thank you, God, for that. So, God, may, 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 we, may we leave this place with our head held high. Not discouraged, but encouraged. Knowing that you are with us. May we bring that message to those around us. God, we sure do need that message today. We thank you, Father, that you are always with us, that, 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 that the messiness of our lives doesn't matter. You are right there with us, God. We thank you for that. Help us to show your love and compassion to those around us. And we will give you praise and glory. To the name of Jesus we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So God bless you. Go and share that message of Jesus with someone this week. When you do that, remember, you are loved, we love you. Most importantly, you are loved by God. Amen? Amen. God bless you.